Hi. Hi. <laughs> Great introduction. <laughs> yeah, shit. Thank you, man. We're wow. here. Of for course. The, for the first Hungarian uh, touching basis uh, interview. I mean, first Hungarian artist. Crazy. After a list of uh, DJ Seinfeld, LOD, DJ Boring. Mm. Yeah, and LOD too. LOD too, on the internet. Wow. Translated into Hungarian. We will also translate this into Hungarian. Night Seru. Night Seru. But this is also for the international crowd. Yes. For the, the people outside of our wonderful country yes. to get to know a little bit more about you, just as much as we get to know a little bit more about you. Oh. Um, it's going to be a really deep conversation. I can <clears throat> already feel it. It's getting deep. And uh, I interviewed Pepe today. He's, he's lying behind the, the couch and a mattress. <laughs> But um, so, so my muscle, my interview muscle, maybe it's a little bit like ready to go. Cool. Um, so my yeah. talking muscles is, is um, it's going to be all right. I just need to drink this speech. Well, you've been, you've been talking a lot these past couple of days or uh, you've been, been, your talking muscles, uh, have they been? Strong? No, I mean like, like my interview muscles because. Oh, it's been a while? Yes. Well, this is. Um, it's been a while for me too. It's been roughly two hours. <laughs> oh yeah, it's, it's a long time. Um, so, dude, I think I want to start by kind of going really back to um, to hear a little bit about where this musical journey really started for you. Um, All right. Kind of earlier days. If there was anything before electronic music, I heard some um, chatter of a band. Yes. Uh, in the past. Um, yes. Any other names in the past? So just if you could take us like a little bit back. Okay, so how it so it's it's basically all started with like um, <clears throat> with me uh, going to a piano school to like a musical school to conservatorium. Yes, <clears throat> to have like piano lessons because my sister were she was having piano lessons and. My parents said that I should have one too because we had a really nice piano, grand piano in our <clears throat> flat and I was doing fine for two years but then I, I realized that I don't want to play this kind of boring classical stuff on the piano. I want to play my own stuff so I left the <clears throat> school after two years which is actually a bad idea because now I wish I had stayed there for a little bit longer so I could play on, the, on my synthesizers a bit more fluid. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <clears throat> to have a bit more like music theory, yeah, just yeah, yeah. kind of stored <clears throat> in the back of the mind. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah. but yeah, and, and then I was like, um, so my first experience with, with like making like music is when oh, my throat is weird. <clears throat> so is when... Uh, it's the peach juice. Maybe <clears throat> you drink some water. Yeah, I think I have secret water. Oh, yes. Personal water. water. Yeah. It's in the rider. <clears throat> no, in my rider I actually have a <clears throat> bottle of Club Mate for improved performance. So. Hey, you've got like the hairs from the peach, you know, like yeah. the skin probably. No, yeah, <clears throat> it's okay. That's we my can, hypothesis. We can cut it out. It's like um, a thick, thick peach. Thick peach. peach. <laughs> So my first experience with like making electronic music is when... What, what age were you when you went to this um, I think I was like 12, 13. Um, basically my, my father brought me a CD with a bunch of programs. And one of the programs there, there was Free to Loop 3. Okay, yeah. And I was really into that program, I was just making really silly songs and like, like just making some really cheesy stuff. And then when the whole uh, big um, French um, electro blew up with you know Justice and with the Ed Banger and whatnot, I was I was trying to make some some French electro stuff. And actually, my first big big hit was. Um, was a Michael Jackson remix, 
I think his really? I think the track called Scream and I just did a silly remix and I sent it to a blog or something and then the blog posted it and back then there was this website called Hype. Hype? Yes. It's okay. it's basically a, a website where they like collect all the music from like blogs around the world and then you will have like a they like vote on it. Yeah, and then they like vote on the tracks and and if your tracks gets enough vote, then you will get a feature on their... Um, is it like a hype, like hype machine? Because there's the website Hype Machine. That's yeah, I think that's the name. Yeah, I, I, I can already remember the name yeah. Hype, but I, it's, it's, it's probably Hype Machine. machine. Like yeah, yeah. Green and white. Yeah, so yeah, yeah, yeah. And kind of a light complexity. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah that was maybe quite it's big, hype, big. Maybe it's Hype Machine. Yeah, that was quite big back then. And there was a lot of like electronic uh, kind of underground music as well. Yeah. A lot of remixes, edits. Yeah, kind of yeah, yeah. And yeah, that was my first big hit. Was, was that as Route 8? No, it was uh, with unpopular scenes. Which unpopular is a different, scenes. I had like many areas. Many? Uh, my, my favorite one was Lightning Trash, Lightning which was trash. basically a, uh, it was basically a, a kind of like a minimal electronic project of mine. Okay, you know? okay, Lightning, Lightning Trash. trash. Yes. Was it the high speed? No, it was like it was quite slow actually. It was. It was, it was, more it was the like really. That was yeah, the it was like really. It was like it was like when Nathan Fake did the Border Community stuff, mm. and that was and it had that that type of vibe. Um, so yeah, and then yeah, and um, and then I I went on Tumblr and I started to posting my my tracks on Tumblr. Yeah, and. Was this during high school years or? Uh, it was. I know it was. It was. It was after. It was when I got to the university. I yeah. think. And uh, yeah, I, I met met some. Uh, I got some. I met some friends on Tumblr, and one of the guys was, was Zoltan, who was like, who was like, uh, making his own tracks as no pop kids. And he was he was uh, making this kind of fuzzy indie punk rock music, okay. which was you know quite big, like with Parisian Beach and Zombie Girlfriend, you know that type of stuff. And he and we met, I, I think in Vitula or somewhere, and <laughs> and we were like, okay, let's 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 make a track just for fun. And we we made a track as Broken Cups because the first time I met him, he broke a, a glass. Okay. And and I and I and I typed in on Google Translate that um, what's you know broken glass in in English you know to that and uh, Google said that it's broken cups but I know that cups is actually the cup you use for coffee and stuff it's not the glass but it's okay and uh, yeah and then we did like two tracks and they got pretty big and. As broken cups. Yeah, yeah, and then we 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 got a a, a singer who was also a, a drummer and also a, a bass guitarist. So we were like four, and we had some shows around Hungary. It, it was it was it it was a it was it was my first experience how to handle the my you know how to handle the my nervousness. On the stage because I was always quite nervous and I always I'm still sometimes a little bit of an introvert. Yeah. I like to stay inside, alone. Um, <laughs> uh, sometimes. Uh, and, sometimes uh, a lot of yeah, times. and and these these um, um, gigs helped me to like overcome these. And yeah, we had a few gigs. Um, we made an album. It was. Yeah, it was a lot of fun, and then um, I started to listen to to more electronic music, and I was listening to Beats in Space radio, and mm. um, and then I discovered the Lies Records, it was run by Ron Morelli, and there was a guy there called Steve Summers who was doing really, really dark this kind of Chicago house music, mm -hmm. and he did a a live set on Beats in Space, and there was a video about it. And I watched it and I was like, oh, he's like, where is his computer? He's like only using like hardware stuff. He can make music with just hardware stuff. It was like a completely new word for me. So I borrowed some student loan 
<laughs> and I mean, I didn't have any money, so I told my parents that, yeah, I need the student loan for school, but I actually spend it on, on synthesizers. And I bought my first few synthesizers, and I recorded some tracks on root tape, posted on my SoundCloud, and yeah, people picked it up, and then I ended up on a, on a Greek bass label, then on Lobster Termin, and yeah, you know the, the rest. So, and where did this Route 8 uh, name come from? Oh, yes. Um, uh, I think everybody knows this by now, but it's because, <laughs> because, it's, a, Maybe not because it's a cute story. So I, I always tell this because it's, I, I think it's cute. I'm cute. Yes. So, <laughs> so, basically, there is a road called Route 8 here in Hungary. And we always go down on Rue Tay to see my grandma, who was living in Hosszúperesteg in Vash County. Country? Okay, County. Okay. Yes, it's really beautiful. And then also the road is going to like mountains and whatnot. It's a really, it's a, it's a, for me, it's a really beautiful road. And I, I really like driving and I love traveling. So that's why I, I picked this name. Nice. Yeah. That's actually a really cute story. Yes. Say. Yes. Yeah, I told you. <laughs> and um, so, you uh, you ended up on a Greek-based label. Yeah, it's first. called Nose. No, Nose. I don't know how to pronounce it. Nose. Hmm. Yes. That was the Ilida EP, which was my. I I had a vinyl release before, on a on Bokari Records, which is a London base, but Ilida EP was my first vinyl release which only featured my tracks. That, the other one was like a split EP. But my first ever rooted EP was on Far of Exile. It was yeah. with, uh, with Mental Murder, which is like, which That's was a- nice uh, yellow cover. Yeah, yeah, it was a tape release, tape and digital, and then uh, a year and a half later, we pressed it on vinyl. Yeah, but that was more like ambient, like spacey stuff, right? Not really. It was. Right. It, I was heavily inspired by Steve Summers, so mm. it was. It had a, a strong Chicago house vibe hmm. with a dark overtone. Um, hmm. Yeah. But it, yeah, and um, so then Lobster Thurman. Yes. Came knocking. How is this? Can you tell us a little bit about the Lobster Thurman uh, connection? Yeah, it's basically uh, Jimmy bro dropped me a message five, six years ago. I don't know. Mm. Time is running so fast. Um, um, and he was like, oh, hi, I'm Jimmy. I'm doing the Street of Beige um, parties in London. And I'm, I'm going to start my own label, Cut Lobs of Termin. And do you want to uh, be a part of it? And first I was like, mm, Lobs of Termin, what's what what kind of name is this? <laughs> and I was like, um, yeah, why not? And I was I was I was pretty open at the time. Um, and then he sent me the first palm stretch release, and I was like, okay, this is this is quite good. This this label can actually be something something big one day. And yeah, and then we we did a record, and and it just it just blew up really. Yeah, yeah. That's, um, it's really quite nice because uh, then since then you've done like, what is it, four releases on there? Yeah, and I, and I, I, the first one was, was... Dry Thoughts. Dry Thoughts. Then I had like a, a limited pressing, 10 minute long, slow disco something. Cruising? Yeah, cruising, yes. <laughs> I can't remember the name. I have a minute. And then, That's good. And then <laughs> That's the... Fine. Yeah, yeah, it's good to have you right. It's I, good to have I, 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 I had, like, I so many tracks, like... Yeah, that, that's what I wanted to ask, is that around that period when Jimmy found you, or... Um, were, yeah. So how did it look? Were you kind of... Uh, had a surplus of tracks that were kind of ready to go. Were yeah, you uploading like, things kind of more demo-ish and quickly to the internet that people were listening to? Yeah, it's, I actually kind kind of miss those days because these days when I sit down on a new track, I so I, I usually overthink the track, um, and I also have a lot of stuff in mind that oh, I need to make a track so I can get gigs, so I have money, so I can pay my rent. And back then I was like, I just want to make some tracks. I like, I don't care the quality. So that's why a lot of my tracks back then was like kind of, you know, lo-fi vibe. Yeah, um, yeah quite lo-fi. Um, because I didn't care about the quality really. I just wanted to record, you know, fun tracks. And it was a lot of fun. 
so yeah, I had like, I don't know, like, like 50 tracks wow. or something. Um, but then when that whole US robbery thing happened. So t tell, us, tell us a little bit about, about that whole order. Oh yeah, oh, yeah. It, was, it was our first. When, when, when was this, like time-wise? This was uh, two, last year or 2017? No, no, it was 16. 2016? Yes, yes, it was. Yeah, it was three three years ago almost. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, it was it was our first tour in America, and um, <laughs> we landed in Detroit. This is a lobster Thurman tour. Yeah, yeah, with Jimmy, we landed in Detroit. The promoter picked us up. <laughs> we put everything in his car, and he was like, "It's quite late. Let's grab a dinner." And I was like, "Okay, yeah, let's go." And we parked the car to a uh, next to the restaurant, we went inside, had a really nice dinner, then we went outside and then we saw there were like a lot of people there and everybody was like, like uh, holding, you know, his hands. <laughs> everybody was like shocked and whatnot and we see that some cars had a broken window and we were like, oh shit, what happened? Then they told us that, oh yeah, a lot of, uh, some, some, some gang broke into these cars and they stole a lot of stuff. And then the, we slowly approached the promoter car and we saw that there was like a, a dent on the on the pass, on the driver's side door. And then we opened the car and we saw and also the trunk and we saw that they, like they took everything. <laughs> we had all of our stuff in the trunk and there was like nothing left. <laughs> and um, yeah, we were we were quite shocked. The lucky thing for me that I always keep my my passport with me, so I was able to like later to travel to Canada and whatnot. But Jimmy didn't, so he had to stay in America. Um, but yeah, it was it was quite crazy. And I also I was traveling with my sins because I was doing a live show around the U.S. and yeah, realizing that everything was gone is was was quite. Quite, quite and so you lost a significant amount of music on your computer. Yeah, because well. I uh, because I I usually I don't carry my external hard drive, but for this one I did because I wanted to make record some music on the go with my synths um, in America. So I I took my hard drive and yeah I had everything there, so like fifty tracks, fifty unreleased stuff. Um, so yeah, um, that's why after the robbery happened, I needed some time to like to like uh, come up with some with some new stuff. So that's why I had like a break with, with Rotate for two years, I think. I mean, not, not like... From 2000, like, uh, what is it? 2014 to 2016 or 2016? No, the robbery was 2016. No, right? it's like, yeah, it was like... 2016 to 2018. Yeah, yeah, some, yeah, some, yeah. Because I had my first Rotate like last year, yeah, we unlocked the term. And, yeah, and I the mean, year before that, I didn't have anything. I just had the Q3A and the DJ Saturn and stuff. Yeah, yeah, and um, so at 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 this time, you also um, over the course of that time, you start doing quite a few things locally. So you have the designer drums. Yes, guys. yes. Um, um, can you tell us a little bit about them? Yeah, how it's that uh, whole thing got together. Yeah, it's. Um, it's basically we got together because because Tumblr. <laughs> that was Tumblr. Yeah, Tumblr yeah. We were following each other for a while, and and Gergu and Akush was the main, who is the main. They are the main guys behind Designer Drums. They they were know each other for a long time, and they wanted to start a like a, like um, they wanted to do parties. Yeah. And Gergő was following my... Shout out to Sambank and Akoshvé. Yes, they are the... Big up. Yes, they are the... My, my bros, my fam. Fam, um, fam squad. Yeah. And, um, yeah, and, and Gergő was following my music, so he dropped me a message on Tumblr that, oh, do you wanna, do you wanna meet and maybe, like, like join our, our crew so we can make some some from parties and whatnot and I was like oh yeah yeah let's 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 do it around what time was this do you remember like year wise mm -hmm. I think it was was this before lobster theremin e yes yes it's before it was like two thousand thirteen or something thirteen yes yeah yeah because we are like 
He had a birthday party in May six years. So yeah. 2013. Yes. Yeah, that's crazy. That's a really long time. Yeah, yeah, we did a lot of lot of lot of great parties. Um I'm 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 usually I handling the, the music side and they handling the booking and the logistical side. Logistical side. side. Yeah, yeah. So. And um, from that same group with Get You Soundbank, you guys started the This Is Our Time label. Yeah. So when where did that come from? Um well I wanted to start my own label for a while because so first so I, I started the label um, first to to have a platform where I can release whatever I want. Yeah. And also to have a platform to have a label where I can seek out to to interesting Hungarian artists who I can like um, who I can how can I say that? So to like look out for interesting Hungarian artists who I can show, you know, to the international scene. Yeah. And because we had a platform for Yeah, America. because we had because Farber Zell is more for like experimental stuff. No. Dharma Tadania is more for electro and techno and our label is more focused on house and, and disco. Um but we we only managed to have um two artists besides me like the label now is mostly used for my stuff um i mean it's good but i wish we had like because we had a lot of good djs and whatnot but we don't have that many good producers here in hungary unfortunately but i'm, I'm sure it will change it's like i noticed that like every eight years or nine there is a big boom of hungarian artists and then another eight years nothing's happening so I think now we're perhaps uh, in the next boom. Yeah, yeah we are approaching at the, that. At the beginning of the next boom. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We are, we are approaching that. Something's hopefully coming. Yeah. And um, <clears throat> so in in this same time, I kind of just want to get a timeline of how the your uh, parallel projects were running uh, to, I'm thinking of this DJ Siderman that's mostly on the This Is Our Time side. Yeah, yeah. And then Q3A. Or... Yeah, yeah. So uh, what was up with these two? So I started. Uh, I started a Q three because I wanted to, because the rooted is mostly for house and whatnot, and I wanted to record some some more heavier stuff, mm. and also some electro kind of things, and and Q three stands for Q quake 3 arena because i was a big quake 3 arena player i was in a clan and whatnot and, and yeah i only <laughs> played in the internet cafe yeah yeah i, I remember oh uh, yeah, yeah, yeah i played there then i was actually quite shocked that i was still uh owning the noobs you were owning so, the noobs yeah <laughs> still, still had the lead skills yeah yeah i still have it so <laughs> still can you really just shouting at the screen yeah <laughs> Yeah. Still got it. Yeah. Um, so yeah, and um, around what time did that project kick off? The Q3 thing. Fourteen. Two thousand fourteen. Yeah, I think. Like uh, as the Lobster Thurman, um, first Lobster Thurman release was coming. Yeah, it was around like, that time. Yeah, it was a after that, and and yeah, I, I want and I wanted to do this Q3 outside of Lobster Thurman. Because at that time, Lobster Terminal was mostly focusing on Howie stuff and they didn't focus on techno. Like so, pretty much, you wanted Q3A to be out because you were so heavily involved, I guess, at that point with uh, Lobster Terminal. Yeah. That you wanted something yeah, kind of outside of that. Yeah, and also Lobster Terminal was, was, they were not focusing on techno as nowadays. So I and also at the time some labels approached me if they they wanna if I wanna do some some a record with them. So I did first with Black Medicine and also um, with um, uh, with Darcy. Mm. Um, and yeah, and then I kind of left Q3A. And you did two projects, released two, two, three, three records. Three. I did, three records. I did. I did. Um, one with Black Funny Sun and two on Dasin. So, but I'm gonna do another one with Dasin. Just I'm not in the in the techno mood yeah, yeah, yeah. at the moment. Um, 
think techno is it's getting getting a bit boring and there's a lot of business behind it so business techno shout out that's for sure um um and then uh how how about the dj siderman i guess that's the other end of the spectrum yeah it's like it's uh, i because i was doing a lot of disco edits um, yeah. but uh, just for my live live shows so i was like oh maybe i can release this somewhere uh, and then i realized that the the edits i use uh, they are like so they are they are kind of so they are well known tracks and you know there's a lot of copyright infringement yeah, yeah, involved yeah, yeah. So I decided I will just release it on my label as a on a white with a white label and just a stamp on them. So kind of mysterious. So they want just some uh, just some yeah. edits. So they don't track me down. Just some uh, just some underground edits. Yeah, 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 yeah. and um, yeah, it was yeah I did my first in in sixteen I think. No, no, I did seventeen. No, I did. I did one on lots on a lobster term in sub label. You gonna get it? <laughs> Such a funny name. And then I did a my label on seventeen. And then last year I did another one, and I will have another one this year in September, which is a bit different because this one is basically. So on this, I will have. A track from from a friend of mine, Adam, and I have two DJ Cyberman tracks. They are really Italo disco heavy, and I will also have a track with Soundbang. We we, we made the track together, so it's gonna be nice. two tracks, oh. four tracks, that, three that, tracks for me, and then Adam. Is that a is that a both a debut for Adam and? Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. So they they are they are really. <laughs> Oh, sorry. Bless you. They're really, they're really talented producers. So, nice. I'm very happy to hear that uh, yeah. they're debuting. Yeah, yeah. And um, so, I mean, you, you, you make quite a lot of music. You have these kind of three parallel. You have these three kind yeah. of parallel things. But one thing that um, both me and the guys uh, and the team really appreciate is that you seem to have a consistent amount of. Uh, mixes and radios, podcasts, or just like sets from parties uploaded in between all these releases. Oh yeah. Is this like a, a conscious thing for you? Uh, well, actually, I, I wish I can do more. Even more? More, more mixes. Um, I think I so only... have seen you did like... Sorry? Like one a month this past like uh, eight, yeah. eight months roughly. Yeah, yeah, because... It's quite a lot for an yeah, average. Yeah, because I... I um, because the scene changed a lot. It's 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 there are so many artists. There are so many music. You need to do something to stand out. It's not like when I started making music. It's not like back then if you just upload a track and it was good, that was enough. But these days it's just not enough. You you need to be on social media. You need to show yourself. You need to show how good you are and what not. It's it's actually quite quite stressful um, and. It it kind of slow slows my um, my um, music making process yeah, yeah, because yeah, every yeah. time I sit down on my synths, I have so many stuff in my head on on what to do, where to go, and it's it's a bit hard to deal with this. So was but, was, was this kind of uh, where maybe some this like acid uh, EP kind of came from of like simplifying just a little bit and yeah that, going, that, like, that, raw, that, raw that acid again. EP that acid EP was was a lot of fun to make um, because I was like I was like fuck all of this I just want to make some acid you know because a lot of people were like enjoying my AC gems every day every time I play live so I was like Let, let's just make an acid stuff and yeah, yeah. and I thought that it's it won't gonna be that big but it actually, it actually blew up really you, well. You did some pretty, uh, pretty nice merch around it as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah which yeah. is now worn by the various young DJs. Yeah, I actually have a few t-shirts if you want some. Hook me up, dog. Yeah, it's just a hundred euros, but <laughs> no, no. I think I'll 
Yeah. Okay. Nice. No, no, no. For you, for you, it's it's for it's, you, it's ten percent off. Yeah, yeah. Nice, twenty-seven. Yeah. We can do twenty. Let it be eleven. Eleven. Yes. Wow. Damn, dude, that's big. And um, business. And so, how about kind of in connection with that? Uh, what's up with the whole life side of things for you? Oh yeah. You mentioned you you mentioned it several times. I've seen you do it. You did it at the. You did live at the the only boiler room that yeah. was here as well, the really, yeah. aquarium. Yeah, and then I and then I left left the whole night. Well, <laughs> what, what can you kind of give us a little bit of insight of course. to how um, that looked for you? It was it was um, I love playing live and all of my tracks recorded live, like everything except the last blue tape I did this year. That was done by Ableton um, because I wanted to get more complex stuff. But I realized that working with Ableton is is boring. I don't know. It's just it's just not for me. I I it's like a lot of clicking and it was in Ableton you can control so many stuff that you can get easily overwhelmed, and then you spend like like a week on adjusting the EQs and whatnot, and it and it takes so much time. Mm. So I actually now I got back into making music live again just with my machines and samplers and and drum machines and, and synthesizers um but yeah i i i haven't had a live show for a year because playing live every weekend was quite stressful because my so my the tracks i play live they only work in a live set they were they don't work all by themselves because Basically, those tracks don't have a, be a beginning and an end. They're grooves. Yeah, yeah, because like I mix them together live, and I also add a lot of jam jamming. So, the only track, the only two tracks I I, I released, which were in my live set, was the was the DJ Siderman Summer Groove, and uh, the the other rotate one. Um, Shit, I can't even understand him. Oh God, it was really his last year on Love's Determine. Um, it's not the Come Home. It's the I don't know. But it's 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 something. This it, raw feeling. No, no, it's it's a uh, it's on my Come Home EP, but I can't remember the track name. <laughs> oh God, I'm so bad. Um, Is it Turning Point? No, 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 no. I um, love that track. I'm, really? Man, I've been playing that track a oh, lot. Thank you. It's so weird. Like every time I, I release an EP, I always have a, a favorite track of mine, and I always have a track which I think is is really bad. And every time I say that a a track of mine is bad, everybody says otherwise. Like everybody says that no, that's actually the best track. Like in my latest EP, I thought that the "It's Okay to Dance" track is the strongest. And the be myself into the future is the worst. Um, but everybody's everybody playing playing be myself, be myself into the yeah, future. Yeah, yeah. And I guess because that track is is like the track I recorded in like a day and the other and I worked on the other tracks for like a week. So every time I record a track like really fast, those are the tracks which, that hit the hardest. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like the turning point I recorded that track on an afternoon. Yeah. So wow. that that's that's why I I I, I left Ableton and moved to working with live nice. again. But yeah, I I, I want to do live shows again, and I I think I will start doing live shows in September. Mm -hmm. Just I needed some break because I wanted to focus on like releasing music, and also I really love DJing. Yeah. So. Um, that's why I wanted to focus on my DJing too. Yeah, th this is actually what I wanted to ask is how, how has it been so far and how is it now like balancing out the, the shows and yeah. the production time? Like, how was it, you know, what, was there times when it was too much and how does it look now? Uh, yeah, yeah, it's now, now it's, 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 it's quite okay. It's, uh, I don't have that many shows as last year, but it's because, um, because I spend more time in my studio and and also I changed some agencies and, and and the process of moving over was a bit slow and and yeah I hadn't had a rotate stuff for a while so so that's why um, um, but yeah it's it's 
it's it's quite a good noun actually. Like every month I have a, at least one gig, or even more. So I always have like one a, international. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I, or even more. So I have like, I always have like at least one week where I can be in my studio and making tracks. Yeah. So one week being like five days or like a whole week. A whole week. Just yeah. a whole week. Yeah. And um, and so um. At some point, do you do you want to do like significantly more, or is this like a pretty good balance for you? Uh, I want I want to do more actually. Um, I think it's good now that I don't have that many gigs because I really want to focus on my album. Um, okay. Yes. Okay. Okay. Yeah, okay. It's, uh, I promised this album to my agent last year. Sorry, um, didn't happen. <laughs> but, um, because I didn't have a, an idea what I want to do. But I, now I kind of have, I hope, I pray, I don't know. It's, it's, I just don't want to, I just want to have a concept for my album. And I have a lot of ideas, I just don't know what to do. Um, but I think this, I, I need to figure it out this summer. So I, I set up a deadline then. I set up a deadline that at the end of August, I need to send my tracks to to labels that, hey, I'm rotate. Here is my album. Yay, work with me. Um, how, 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 um, so what it, to you, what is the significance of like a whole album? It would be your first kind of album line. Yeah, it's I mean, my, How many tracks are you thinking? Uh, I think at least seven or I think eight would be your best because rotate, right? Um, <laughs> I yes, so. you have to. You have yes. to do eight. Yeah, obviously. Eight. So, um, um, and would you like want to like tour the album? Do like an album tour? Or something yeah, like yeah. I mean, I, I wanna, I wanna build some um, some shows around it. Also, I wanna make some some live sets around it. Um, so it would be kind of this would now be more of a hybrid of the the the. Produce stuff in the studio and the live. Um, kind, live uh, kind of. I mean, the thing is that um, uh, the the tracks I record in my studio, I can't really play them live because I use so many machines. And when I travel, I don't want to bring everything I have. So when I play live, I have a really stripped down version of my studio, and so that's why some of the tracks I won't be able to play, but um, but yeah, we'll see. So so far, I only have on my for my album, I only I have like zero zero tracks. Nice. <laughs> but if you have an idea, yeah, because I'm I'm still like because I just got a new machine and and it and it's it has a, a, a long strong learning curve. Yeah. So so now I'm just like jamming and trying to figure out what direction I want to go. Um, so, yeah. And um, is it every day for you, music making? Yes, every day. And I, and I think it's, it's good because I, I, um, I think because of this I improve a lot. Yeah. Even though like... 90% of the time I, I can't record a track because like I have a lot of good ideas just the the main problem for me is to like finish a track to have a, an, a, a beginning a middle section and then an end it's hard to put my ideas together into a song yeah, yeah. so um, usually I just jam with my with my stuff and sometimes something just clicks in and then I instantly like finish a track. But that's lately that occurs less often, unfortunately, because as I said, I have way too many stuff in my head. Yeah. yeah. Um, but, um, but it's okay. So, and so, yeah, it's good that I, I make music every day, but also it's bad sometimes because, because of this, I have many uh, waveforms and filters in my head and it and can get you repeat the same motion. Yeah, it door. can get a bit too much. So yeah, that's why sometimes I just don't make music for two weeks just to clear my head and and, uh -huh. and um, kind of uh, you know a, a particularly inter interesting question I think for you 
in the local Budapest scene yeah. is, I mean, your opinion or your perspective of the local scene. I mean, you are, um, you know, definitely kind of a, a, a flag bearer for house music, oh, for yeah. the local <laughs> scene. On an I international, guess. no, I mean, definitely on an international level. There's really very few people doing it like you and I mean, you've been around the world, mm -hmm. you've seen various scenes. I mean, did you play two New Year's Eve's in a row at Bassiani? No, no just, just one. Just one. Uh, okay. just one. I, I just played in their, in their whole room like three times, no, two times. No, I played in, I played in Bassiani once, which was weird. Um, because back then Bassiani didn't have whole room. So I did a, a house set in their, in their big... 1000 people capacity floor it was it was it was quite crazy because that floor is for techno and i did a house set because i thought that oh it's gonna be a house party in like a warehouse and then it was bassiani and i was like oh shit. <laughs> uh, so i was like i needed to like improvise in the middle of my set with some techno so it was, it was quite fun and then i played in the whole room when they opened it and then i played in new year's eve uh, and that that was my longest set ever. I played there for eight hours. It was wow. crazy. Yeah. And what and what what drove you to play eight hours? Um, I I can I can I really love playing long sets because if I have the time, I I know that I can take the crowd on a journey and just play like all sorts of music because I love playing like everything really like techno house, tech house. Um, Good tech house. Yes, really, really crunchy tech house. Um, uh, disco, funk, whatever. Yeah, yeah. And if I have the time, I can slowly move, move between these genres and I can create like a really nice journey. So if I have the chance, I usually ask for like at least two hours. But I think three hours will be at the best. But I can go even even longer. It, it it just really depends on the club and on the on the crowd. And so there, you just caught a vibe, and they yeah, just, yeah, they because, just let you go. Yeah, because like they said, like oh, so you're probably gonna close the club. So I played from 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 five, I think. Yes, from from five, and they said that oh, so you will play like till like um, eight, eight in the morning. And I was like, oh, okay, and, and yeah, and what? And, and then I started to play and what that, and I looked on my watch and it was like, it was like 10 in the morning. And I was like, oh my God, what's <laughs> happening? And it, the club was still full. And, and it was quite funny because around the end, uh, I played some, some ambient stuff because I thought that, okay, the main room is closed, only this room is open. And I thought that, okay, they will close the club down soon. The sound guy is here. I'm going to bring down the vibe and just say, you know, thank you for coming. Have a nice New Year's Eve. Goodbye. And I, I started to play slow, but people were still really raving and whatnot. And then I put on like a, like a not really an ambient track, but it, it, it had an ambient vibe and but it also had some 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 houses up, but it was really it was it was really slow and 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 whatnot. And I thought that okay, everybody will stop dance to this and they will like leave and maybe clap that yeah, whatnot. And but the people went absolutely crazy for that Indian track, and I was like, what the fuck is happening? It was so weird. Yeah, like I dropped the track, and everybody was like, oh yeah, you get house. Oh, I was like. It's crazy. It's I, I really I really love Team Lisi. I love Georgia. I think they at the moment they have the best best uh, best uh, crowd. Yeah. And be the best music scene in, in Europe or in the or in the world even, in my opinion. And that's how I wanted to maybe loop it back to Budapest. Is like what is your perspective on, you know, the local scene? I mean, once we talked about how Maybe one of the areas that could use the most amount of improvement here in the city is the light, in connection with how it's used with the music, how oh, much yeah. it's controlled, like yeah, how much yeah. of an effect you yeah, can like, create. Like no, no projector? Projector? Yeah, like no, no projector. Yeah, yeah, no, no visuals, no like uh, projectors. Yeah, yeah, like yeah, yeah, um, because it was quite popular here that every club had like a projector. Yeah, and I think it's 
I think it's not good because the, the projector takes away the the, the attention from the music. You just you just look on the mm. on the on the screen and just on the on the weird effects it has, or sometimes they put in a movie or something and just 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 move your feet and just watching the 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 thing on the on the wall. I think it's 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 That's quite. Insane. That's insane. Yeah, and I think it's it's it's. It, it, it takes away the, the the attention from the music, so that's why we 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 designed the drums. We said to Larm and also to Tordi that we don't want any of this. It's it's not good. Yeah. And yeah, and um, but but I think it's improved a lot in Larm and also in Tordi. I think the the lights can can have a really drastic effect on the dance floor. Just like dance, and sometimes some some strong lights flashes on on into your eyes can really like hypnotize you. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, that that's that's a really really good Im improvement, uh, which was happily made. Um, yeah. Other improvements. Well, as I said, I wish there would be more producers, and I think that yeah, yeah, and 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 I think they are they are slowly coming. Yeah, I think like, so. Like. Lau, she's a really talented um, techno producer. She makes really, really, really interesting techno. Also, Marcy from Pizza Mora, he makes tracks too. PMR. Like. Shout out PMR. Yeah. Man. Shout out Lau. Yeah. We have to say thank you, Dabo. Yeah, it's it. Some very interesting uh, stuff. Rip, rip Corbin Tete. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. He's he's really he's really good too, and. I think yes. the amount of um, events and uh, nice bookings and, and, and unique locations and like kind of the shout out the, mm -hmm. shout out mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, I think that's really improved and I think the whole mm -hmm. market has become higher quality in events and yeah. I think the crowd is more proactive now than maybe two years ago yeah um, yeah but uh, and, and I think that kind of the the pride that that brings the sense of community that brings, I think that really empowers these new producers to kind of start uh, yeah. st start doing tracks. And I think more and more are now getting the appetite for it. Yeah, and and yeah, as, as you said, I, I, I quite like it that a lot of people, especially you, uh, you have like really interesting parties in really amazing locations. And I think it's, it's really good because at the moment we only have like Larm and and Tordi, which is which is good for this kind of music, and there are no other pl places really, or maybe or maybe Premier Club or Iparama, but that's dangerous. Uh, so um, so and and I always wish that that uh, that other club. Um, uh, open but you know that one uh, yeah i mean th that is really perhaps one of the the, the most uh that's l the, the biggest lacking thing in this uh city is just interesting locations and yeah. also locations where i mean where I the think, sound where the sound can be i on, think on that i level. think it's not i think i think the city has a lot of interesting uh, places I don't think that the problem is the play. I mean, so the the thing is, I wish we had like at least another club like Larm or Tordi, uh, because I think the scene is getting big enough to handle another one. Uh, but we have a lot of uh, interesting scenes where we can where you can throw parties, um, and I don't think the problem is the the locations. Or maybe it is. It's it's a little bit hard to get these locations, but it's I think really but but I think the, the 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 other big problem is to to bring people to these locations because a lot of people they just want to dance like around this this, this area, this, uh, yeah, downtown, the, the city center, area, yeah. and and they don't want to go out further. Um, but I think it's it's a, it's slowly changing a little bit. I think it's like I, a little yeah, bit. like like. Like you did that party at Flashback, which is Flashback, like a kind of outside. That, that hopefully we're, we're yeah. maybe we can do the trying to place the This Is Our Time label night also in a nice mm -hmm. place. Do you have a look out for that one, guys? Yes. Um, but yeah, I think um, 
I think I think it's right what you're saying. It's more about convincing people that yeah. uh, that this thing is unique. I mean, that's what we try to do with uh, the the pretty graphics and the pretty mm. media and and um, and the kind of extra uh, maybe information that mm. we provide and awareness. I think it's I think it's easier to do these when uh, in, in like spring and and summer uh, rather than in winter. I think it's it's way more difficult to doing this in winter. No? the the like alternative venues yeah. during the summer well outside yes but the problem with outside is the weather man yeah. then the weather really can mess with you yeah. that's how we had to postpone like two oh events, yeah this one event like twice because of the flood yeah because yeah, of the yeah. flood and then and the first time because of the the storm mm. and the, the it's more like the we need to change um, the city's perspective a little bit on electronic music. I think when, when people in the city hear the word electronic, they they go, they, they, they are so scared. They just think about really loud techno. When we talk to a lot of these alternative venues, that's the thing that they just think it's risky, you know, and they don't understand that there's all this new kind of wave of like civilized, uh, really quite cultured. Mm. Yeah, yeah I guess music. because they, they see that oh so it's electronic music so it's like the the, the drunk to... tourist we have on Kira yeah, yeah, yeah. they think about that or they, yeah. they think about the other kind of mega clubs that are really you know playing a lot of watered down music yeah, from the it's, last it's, 15, it's, 20 it's still years. a it's still a small scene we we uh, absolutely we are really absolutely but it's but it's getting bigger and and yeah. it's I'm really I'm so happy to see the that the next generation is interested in this so we're very happy that uh, you guys kind of uh, paved the way a little bit. Oh yeah, not a little we, bit, quite a bit. Yeah, because, yeah we, we tried. Yeah, man, when the the first uh, when I was first uh, even thinking about doing something like this or or started the first parties, I mean, uh, I remember it was um, I think it was Akosh, uh, your organizing partner mm -hmm. from Designer Drums, who uh, recommended Pizza Mora for me. Mm. Um, so that's how I met Pizza Mora, for really? example. Oh, yeah, cool. and, and I mean, uh, when I was, you know, looking at the the kind of promoter pages uh, from the city, it was like you guys that were one of the main examples of mm. seeing posters, this kind of stuff. So mm. all of these impulses really mattered. So uh, thank you for uh, thank you for that. Oh, I'm glad because we were like um, we were we were talking um, a lot about this that oh. Uh, we notice that that our friends and our our general audience they won't go out to our parties that often because you know they had uh, kids and and they moved away and they got old so they don't want to party that much anymore and we were wondering that when when is the next generation will show up to our parties and and here they are oh, and right. we are we're yeah here. and we are really happy for them. <laughs> So yeah, thanks so much for, for that side of things and also for, oh. for the music. And, Thank you uh, for uh, um, uh, carrying the, the torch. Oh! <laughs> Bye, man. Thanks so much. Yeah. That was pretty extensive. That was like an hour. <laughs> <laughs>